Hello everyone, Lawrence here and today I'm going to talk to you about switches and how to loop them without taking them out of your keyboard. See, there are some awesome keyboards on the market like the Ducky 12SF or even this HS K620T which do not have hot swappable switches which means if you want to loop your switches you actually have to desolder your entire board and if you're anything like me, you'll probably break it. So today what I'm going to teach you is how to loop your switches the right way without having to desolder them. Let's first though, let you hear the difference in scratchiness on these Kale Box Royals, um, looped and unlooped. For this method of lubing you'll need two tools, actually only one, the other one slightly optional. First thing you'll need, a keycap puller, this usually comes with your keyboard. And you'll also need one of these pokey boys. These are called syringes, um, they're actually used to you know, inject stuff into your veins and that's not what we're going to use it for. Um, you can get these um, without any prescription or you don't have to be a doctor or anything to get these. If you live in Belgium, I guess most European countries. They're dirt cheap, I think this one was like 23 cents or something. Um, so that's all the tools you really need. If you want to pull your keycaps off with your fingers, you don't even need a keycap puller. Then the other thing we're going to use is loop, obviously. Now this is a semi-dry loop. Um, this one's made by PDs. This is Link Loop All Weather. You also can get the dry loop, which I would actually recommend, but I'm out of it and this is also almost gone. The reason we're using this stuff is it's a two component loop. It has the slidey stuff, which is the blue stuff, and then there's also a transparent carrier. And so the first thing you do is you take your link loop or any other bicycle chain loop that's two components, make sure you really shake the heck out of it so that it's one nice mixed liquid. And then you just take your syringe and suck out the liquid so you have like, what is this, two milliliters? of the slippery stuff. That's all you need really. I can do an entire 70 key keyboard with about 0.2 milliliters. So you really don't need a whole lot of this. So with these Sherry style switches, if you press down the stem, you can actually easily get access into the inside of the switch. It's terribly hard to show on camera, but just have a look at your own keyboard. You can easily get to the contact points at the back. That's the easy part. What is not as easy is when you're using these kale switches because if you press these down you still have a full seal of the stem against the top of the housing. This is where our little syringe comes into play because of again capillary action which is basically a liquid sucking itself where it shouldn't be. All you have to do is take the pointy bit and stick it into the side like so. Now let's do this again up close. So you take your switch like so, you take your syringe and put it onto the side. As you press it, you get a little drop and once you make that little droplet big enough, it will actually spread to the side of the switch, at which point it will basically just suck itself inside. All right, so with the switches in our keyboard, it's the exact same procedure, although you just get a free hand. So you can use that hand to like pull it to the side if you want to, but it's basically just a bit of pulling and then this drop went wrong, that's what you don't want. You can actually just stick the side of your syringe in a bit better, create a drop and then the drop will go inside all on its own. And as you can see, I'm hardly using any loop at all. It's way easier to under loop and then have to go over it again than it is to over loop and desolder, open up all your switches, get the loop off and start over. So use a little bit and you can always add more. That's the key here. Oh, and don't stab yourself. Right, so I just did the entire board. As you can maybe see, I used about half a milliliter for an entire keyboard. So the trick really is to use as little of this stuff as you need. Keeping in mind, of course, that most of this is just gonna evaporate. Um, so about half a milliliter will maybe be 
0.2, 0.3 milliliters of actual loop that you get on your switches. When you're done doing this, basically you just need to shake your board a little bit and then just cycle the switches as quickly as you can before the loop will start drying off. So you can distribute the loop and its distribution agent as quickly as possible and then just let it dry off and you know just cycle the board. Uh, with some boards you can just put them upside down press them down a little bit. With this one it's not as easy because the switches are like hidden so I'm just gonna put the keycaps on start typing away and then in about 10 minutes time this board will be ready. And so it's basically that easy. You just pull off your keycaps, spray them, well, carefully inject lube into them, put the little protective cover back on your syringe so you don't stab yourself, and then just put the keycap back on and just, you know, cycle all your switches evenly. Maybe even give the keyboard a little shake, which will also highlight if you have any Radley stabilizers. Now, I tried and demonstrated this on box navies. These are clicky switches. And so you probably won't really hear the difference, but you can definitely feel the difference in scratchiness. The keyboard I have with the Box Royals, which is this KBD67 Lite Revision 2. Super smooth now, even though standard Box Royals are fairly uh, scratchy. It's a lot smoother now. And then that Ducky keyboard over there with standard Cherry MX Blues feels amazing as well. So for keyboards that don't have hot swap switches, or if you simply just have a pre-built keyboard like this one, and you don't want to take all the switches out, um, this is definitely a very easy, fast way of lubing your switches with fairly little risk of actually damaging them um, by over lubing. And it's very easy to add a little bit, to add the same amount of lube to each switch individually. And you can always add more if you really need to. Anyway guys, if you like this sort of content from me, let me know in the comments. Obviously, it's not the best way of lubing. Ideally, you take your switches apart, loop them very carefully and individually uh, before then building them into a custom keyboard. But for those with a pre-built, this is about as good and as easy as it gets. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what technique you use. And if you want to see more content, feel free to hit that subscribe button so you won't miss any future videos. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.